Using a Formula 1 engine in a road car isn't an easy task. What if I said screw reality and build an F1 V10 engine and put it in this station wagon to go against the Renault eSpace? And yes, it'll rev beyond the limited 12,000 RPM once I drive it in Beeman G. Hey guys, it's Trice here, and let's get on with our build. So with the panel material of this here station wagon, which is kind of rare for me to build one in this game, I guess the panel material will be just fiberglass with a space frame chassis made... Oh, I can't do corrosion or um, carbon fiber. And so light AHS steel with... Can't do a mid, unfortunately, so front longitudinal. And same thing, can't put a push rod, so double wishbone front and a rear, a push rod. So for the engine, it's of course going to be a V9 degree V10 engine, like I said so. And for the engine block material, I guess aluminum silicon heavy? It would first get the bore quite a bit like in the 90s, and of course drop the stroke down to like in the 50s or something like that, maybe a little bit higher than this, around a 3.5 liter, maybe this will work? So the bore, 91.7 millimeters, and the stroke exactly at 53 millimeters to get the engine size to 3,500 cubic centimeters, or 3.5 liters, which is the maximum for Formula 1 back in the day with the V10 era. Well, to be specific, it's the early 90s that had the 3.5 liter V10s, now like the 3 liters, later on in the 90s and early 2000s. Amex is out, dual cam 5 valve, also aluminum silicon. The internals, I guess we'll go all out, billet steel internals, and I... Don't think they use titanium, but why not? Just to uh, play it safe here with some forged lightweight pistons and probably a balance shaft. The compression cam profile, I guess, jacked us up quite a bit. Compression-wise, we'll think about this. In the RPM unit, I did see to make the engine, well, in terms of the sound and everything for Beam and G, I'm going to jack this up to 9200 RPM and do the file editing in Beam and G once I get the car ready and everything. And the fuel systems, it'll be a multi-point throttle per cylinder configuration with a race tape, a manifold with the fuel, maybe ultimate. And finally for the headers, so it's obvious to be racing headers, dual exhaust, and no cats and no mufflers, and we got some valve folds, so let's first of all jo uh, jack up the springs and lifters. Quite a lot. I know back in the day, coming back to the compression here, I believe most F1s, the V10s, ran to like a, a 13 or something like that, but we're at a 12, but increasing more and more, we're losing power because we're starting to run a little bit too strong, could cause some knocking. Or I could just cheat the system and advance it to make it from a 95 AKI to a quote-unquote 100 AKI just to improve power, and to be within that margin of a realistic compression ratio back in the day and we're still dropping power. Alright, made the necessary changes for the automation engine only. Like I said, I'll update this in Beam and G. So we get the power rating of 481.2 horsepower at 8700 RPM and a torque of 294.3 pounds feet of torque at 8500 RPM. So it's a pretty decent running engine for a 3.5 liter only built for automation because well, we got the RPM limit being restricted up to 12,000 RPM in the game. Not going to like 17 or 18,000 like these bad boys used to rev back in the day. So, let's do a quick dyno poll and see what this engine sounds right now. Just another 10,000 RPM left to go until we hit that sweet spot in terms of the sound. So for the drive type, of course, river drive with a sequential 6 speed with the top speed set. I'm going to have to drop this for right now once I do the top speed editing, the power editing, and the gear ratio. I can edit all those in Beam and G, so theoretically, it could probably go to 200 miles an hour, but for now, let's start off low. And for the tires, of course, radio, unfortunately, semi slicks will have to do for now and jack up the rear to 315. Can I extend the body? Yes, I can. So update the tires to some like almost semi-realistic F1 tires in terms of the rim diameter and the width and everything, including the rear diameter too. So there's 660s in the back, which is 26 inches it translates to. And they're 25 inches up front, which that equals to 635 millimeters. So we got some asymmetrical tire diameters that we're running with. And the brakes, no carbon ceramic. So Venedis 6 up front and Venedis maybe 4, almost a sequential or 
Matching brake size, I meant. And the other tray, <laughs> it's obvious. Race diffuser with the brake airflow, jack this to probably maybe like a 40. The interior, well, it's probably gonna be just both of us, both the driver and passenger. So the interior will be just a racing interior with this 4.3 update of the game with no entertainment whatsoever. The only entertainment you need is just the engine sound. The steering, I guess, manual power steering, rack and pinion with no traction aids whatsoever, ABS brakes, traction control, or none of these whatsoever. With some basic 1990 standard safety standards with the suspension right here. I'm guessing active sport with semi-active dampers and pass sway bars running on a race preset to start things off. Where are we at? We're... I for now. And the rear brakes are a total joke. What if I drop the brake force? Not a joke in terms of being weak. So I guess right now, since everything seems to be good with the suspension and everything else, so it's customized this bad boy in a time lapse to make this boring old station wagon into a wannabe race car, kind of like the Renault E-Space. So let's get to designing with this car in a time lapse right now. So for the design of this car, I started by making my own custom headlights. First, I used some negative dog tape to cut into the body. Then I fiddled with what custom headlights I wanted, which I got done later on. Next, I cleaned up the insides with some plastic bars and 3D fixtures. After I got the headlights done, I worked on the bottom grill, which was no problem, and the main grill that I wanted to use. It took me some time to find the best one for this car. Eventually, I chose this sausage grill mod, then stretched all the way across and added some vertical bars inside it. I then added a carbon fiber front splitter and a towing eye on the front bumper and some other changes like the windshield wipers and everything else in general. For the sides, all I did was slap on the side view mirrors, some door handles, and change the stock rims to the center locking wheels, just like they use in Formula 1, which I painted them black. For the back, it was pretty simple. I used a pair of vanilla taillights that worked well for this car, including adding the rear diffuser, the massive roof wing, and a custom license plate similar to the 94 E-Space, which says Haven F1. The name Haven is the car's name, made by Macmillan, a parody of McLaren. After that, I repainted the car to a Scuderia Ferrari type of red color. Finally, I decided to add some stripes for my livery, seeing that my livery skills are mediocre. This was my only option to make it more race car-y. The center stripe you see me adding to the entire car is painted black and stretches from the front bumper all the way to the back end. I did the same thing with the other two stripes as I changed that color to orange and made it thicker than the center stripe. I repeated the same process of adding that stripe and made some last second changes after doing this. So after getting everything done with this build, here's how it came out. This is the 1997 Macmillan Haven F1. This Renault E-Space F1 competitor is the ultimate wagon. It's powered by their championship winning 1994 Macmillan MCM RX F1 car with the same 3.5 liter V10 capable of revving over 18,000 RPM. Alrighty, so finally I got the Macmillan Haven, the F1 edition, kind of like the Renault E-Space F1 from 1995 or 4, what'd I say again? So seeing we got the car all set and done here in automation, let's get ready to export this guy to Beeman G, but despite these, so a lot of problems we got here, such as a short gearing, a significantly reduced car's top speed, the weight lack of power steering, front and rear dampers being too hard, some of tires being used, front cameras being too high, rear tires are quite wide, we still have some brake freight issues, and the side of the engine's getting narrow. Let's go to Beam and G Drive and do some editing with the file of this car. So here we are at the map of Grid Map version 2 with the Haven completely all spawned up in here. So to go into the file to edit this thing, I just go into the mods folder of version 0.30, go into mods, and I believe it's unpacked. And yes, it is indeed unpacked, so I'll just double click here and go to vehicles, the folder, and the Macmillan Haven. And in the engine, uh, engine metadata here, I just double click on the Camzo engine and the little hex code here. And first thing I gotta do, go into the torque graph here, the main engine torque, is to jack up the RPM to 11,000. 
First things first, I'll do the idle RPM, because I know that some or most F1 V10s rev at, not rev, but idle at 3000 RPM. We'll do this for the starter motor, or starter backs RPM, and the idle RPM. 20 minutes of editing later. Alright, so I finally managed to change the RPM as I go over the thing here, the Camzo engine. So as of right now, with the torque up in here, which is in Newton meters, I just added the values from 9200 RPM, I changed them to 9500, and then had like increments of either 500 or 1000 RPM until I get the red line of 18,200 RPM producing 357.03 Newton meters of torque. Along with the engine idle RPM at 3000 RPM, scroll this down a little bit to the actual engine with the, well first of all the downshifting here for our, the arcade system, the gear shifting mode, and down here, is a badge to change the actual rev limiter, the RPM, to 18,200 RPM, kind of like the F1 2004 V10. And that's currently what I've done to this vehicle. So let's start this up, and here's the new torque graph, 700 BHP and 294 brake horsepower. So start her up. So that's what it is in idle, and here comes the rev. Not too bad, but it is f one and second of all, what the hell, please, not the damn menu. I would say, what the hell happened to my, did my mapping change? Alright, got to remapped, I was just worried about the license plate here, how the freaking why is this so low poly, <laughs> why is it so low textured? Anyways, let's see if my gear ratios are in good shape, so first gear we go. Maybe make the second gear shorter? Add fifth gear, way shorter. So I badge two to gear ratios to a pretty fair amount, getting a top speed of 200 miles an hour. So let me save this configuration here. So seeing that we got everything all tuned up, let's do our base performance test, starting with the 0 to 62 acceleration test, followed by the 62 to 0 brake test, and lastly, a top speed run, which I've already did so off camera. So 0 to 60 will commence now. First gear we go, going on 70 miles an hour. 77 first, second. 0 to 62 in 3.23 seconds of 150.33 feet. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now for a brake test, hit the brakes now at 62 miles an hour. Hard on the brakes, 62 to 0 in 2.27 seconds of 92.50 feet. That ain't too bad for a race car with some vented disc brakes and not carbon ceramic brakes and more tuned towards a racing setting without ABS brakes. So for top speed run, I'll just give you a listen to this engine right here. Two hundred one miles per hour according to airspeed. Two hundred seven on the speedometer. Now it's crashed out somewheres. So crash into a freaking wall at 200 something miles an hour with a wannabe F1 V10 engine. So 50 times slow-mo into the wall and got some stretchiness in the polygons in the back. Are you kidding me? So full time. And good. Engine is destroyed because of that collision. Because, well, main engine is broken. So the vehicle in general, at least the rear wing stayed intact, including the left freaking mirror. <laughs> okay then. So, let's go to a time trial run, a true track, to really unleash this beast. So here we are at the bottom map of the Spa Francor Champs, and we got the Haven all loaded up, and we're preparing to do a single lap with a rolling star around us here racetrack for our time trial run. So let's get things started here, in ready, go. A little bit too late on the launch, but... Oh no. This is my 100 something mile an hour one, not the 200 version. God damn it. All right, I think I got it fixed, so here's the F1 version. That's more like it. That is more like it. Let's hit the brakes and really get used to this car because <laughs> we got the wheel spin, the thing is screaming, and I know what I'm doing. So is this the first lap? Okay, first lap we go and hit the brakes now. Good on the brakes. Brakes are pretty good. 
And Axo shifted to neutral. Stupid B. Alright, kids, can I fly down New Rouge? Lefty there. Requires corner cutting. What hella wide, even though I corner cut it back there. So, in conclusion, you can't go flat out in New Rouge with this car. And brakes are fading. Knees weak. But at least I recovered while drifting. So, how about this braking zone here? So, look at that. 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, and yeah, these brakes are damn near cooked. I can't even do nothing about them. So this kind of problem with the brakes here is kind of like in the F1 video games, like once you bash on the brake pedal, like slam on the brakes, the, the brakes are instantly cooked, and you really can't do nothing about them other than brake a little bit early, and be conservative on your brakes, and you don't want to brake and all good stuff. That's kind of like what we got going here, but in the BMG Drive world. And final corner, can I drift this? Nope, we just went wide, so we're gonna get a time in the two minutes, so two minutes, 30 seconds, 262 milliseconds, that's quite a bit of a mid. So, crashed out straight ahead in the wall, what's this Max Verstappen in this bitch? I meant Sebastian Vettel it, as we kill the engine. So, anyways, for the final part of the video, let's drop this bad boy down a big-ass ramp of the Car Trip 2023, which I need to update this map here. Seeing that I paid for the mod and all that good stuff. So, anyways, take it to the top right now. So, here we are at the top of the ramp with the green lights yawning in my face, so it's for it now, because, well, it's not like the old days of Car Jump Arena where it's still the original F1 version. Alright, Load Haven F1, not the original one straight from automation. You need, you need to, like, make that as my, like, default version of this car, like, once you download it off of my Discord server, which the car should be live right now. So again, green lights, accelerate. There we go, now we got the actual gear ratios, now I can actually floor it, and get up to 200 miles an hour, in peace. And healthy 0 to 60 in less than 3 seconds, 276, 135 feet. 201 miles an hour is our exit speed, and we're gonna be hitting at the... 390 meter marker. And over end we go. And barrel rolling violently up in here. Still barrel rolling, save the engine because we can go in the pool here, and rest on our roof on the pool. And are the... Yep, it's a red flag. Stop what you're doing, and... Yeah. And dropping this car off, it's kind of funny, like, you just got the red flag here, and green light. Red flag, green light, and it just alternates because you can just, like, a little field or whatever. Kind of like a collision point somewhere in the map where it triggers like the lights going from yellow light, like somewhere's in here, and well, it took me a yellow flag. Yellow flag somewhere's here, and then where I'm at, it triggers the red flag marker. So, final look at the vehicle. We got the wing finally removed, the rear wing, and the rest of the car looks severely mismatched, misshaped because of tumbling over, going end over end, and barrel rolling violently to this point here. So, with the Macmillan Haven F1, aka the wannabe Renault eSpace F1 competitor from 1997, from modifying the engine from automation to beaming G by boosting the power and RPM limit, the car acts like a true F1 car in a way with its power, except for the lack of handling due to mediocre aerodynamics and how the vehicle is shaped. Overall, it's a quick car that's capable of revving up to 18,200 RPM from this V10 engine. Whether you drive this car on a track or on the streets, everyone's gonna bust a nut once they hear this thing fly past them. So anyways, that'll do it with automation and beam and G drive. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.